our main latest Divi update was focused on speed. We've now made Divi so fast that we've seen increased page speeds and page scores, but you still have to optimize your website. So in this video, I'm going to share with tips and tricks on how to optimize your Divi content for speed. All right, so the first thing we need to talk about is optimizing the content above the fold. But before we get started, I'd like to talk about critical CSS. Critical CSS in Divi automatically detects what CSS needs to be loaded right away, referred to as above the fold CSS. All right, so I've gone ahead and created this blank page. There's nothing really on here. So in this case, you want to add basic information like the title, the paragraph, and the button. So I'm going to start by demonstrating how we should create our hero images and what we should avoid. So let's go ahead and get started. So over here, we're going to add our modules. So let's start by adding a row. So I'm going to add a single column and I'm going to start by adding a text module. So this could act as our title. So I'm just going to minimize, add this as our title. So I'm going to change this to heading one. And then I'm going to add some paragraph text. Next, I'm going to uh, center this and we may also need to style it as well. So I'm going to come over here to design and I'm going to start here with the heading. So let's say we want to change this to bold and center it. And we might as well add our font. Now, you guys know I like using pop-ins, so let's go ahead and add that. Also go here to our paragraph text. And again, we're going to change this to pop-ins. So this is the design process that you'd normally go through as you're designing your pages. So here I have my uh, main content. I'm going to save this. My next module here is going to be a button. So I'm going to search for my button module. And here it is. Next, I'm going to come over here to design alignment, make sure it's centered. And I'm also going to go in and activate use custom styles for button. So we can just add a bit of styling to this. So we're going to add a background color. So let's go with something like that. We're going to add our border. And for our text, we're going to change this to a light color and change our font to poppins. Okay, great. So far, we've just added our main content here. In order for us to show our content above the fold, we really need to make sure that this section here covers the main area of our screen. So I'm going to come over here to section settings, and then I'm going to go into design, sizing, and now I'm going to come over here to minimum height and set this to 100 view H. So this ensures that my design now is going to be pretty much covering the main screen. It's pretty much covering above the fold content. Of course, this is very basic. You can also go in and add other elements to make this look nice. But there's also something that we need to discuss here. So when using images, I will stick with JPEG because it just uh, allows you to optimize them without losing a lot of detail. Stay away from PNGs unless you really want to use uh, the transparent backgrounds. Now let's move on to another way that we can create our above the fold content. And and that is by adding a full screen hero area. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button, go to full width, and I'm going to add my full width header. So again, you can see here we have our main content that uh, we had over here. We have our contents, a paragraph and our button. So over here, the, the advantage of this is it is very easy to use and everything is all set up for us. All we have to do is to uh, come over here to design, go to layout, center this, so just by doing that, all our content has been centered. And then here, instead of adding that 100 VH, we have our full screen. So I can just say make full screen. And that now becomes my above the fold content. We can further customize this by going in, changing the fonts and uh, also changing the uh, paragraph text and the button as well. So chances are you do not want to have just the text. You may also want to add an image over there on the right. So if you wanted to add an image over here to the right, here's how you do it. You just come over here, align this to the left, and then go back to your content. And you need to come over here to images. And then you can add your header image. So I'm going to go into my media library and choose an image. So let me go with this one. And now I have my image over here. Now, but remember, this image has to be optimized. So you need to go into a program like Photoshop or Canva and reduce the file size. Okay, so this is how you would have your layout. But of course, you can further customize the background and add a background color here that you may prefer uh, just to make your design look much, much better. And then once you're done with that, this now becomes your content above the fold. So while we're on this topic, please try and avoid using images for this main background area because that is going to uh, take a lot of time to load. 
So while we're still on the topic of the hero area, we need to try and avoid using animations because the animations are just adding more code, which will then impact our load speed of our page. So make sure that you try and avoid using animations. If you do really want to use them, then you may want to use them below that fold. All right, so now we're going to be talking about the last important thing about critical CSS. So as you're designing, as you noticed here, we were just talking about the main design for the desktop, but we also need to optimize our mobile and tablet views. So let me show you how to do this. So I'm going to go into my module settings. So you can see here when you hover over here, there are so many elements that we can go in and customize. So for example, for the title here, I can go into uh, this little icon and this will display our tablet and our phone settings. So over here, I can go in and adjust the size or the design or whatever it is I need to design or change. So let me show you how to optimize this. So it may be that there's certain content that you need to show on mobile devices and exclude on say desktops. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna come over here to uh, this image and let's switch over now to my tablet view. So when we focus on this image here, it may be that this could be um, quite big to show on our mobile devices or tablets. We can come over here to our image and then go into this little icon. So this is very important here because we can go into the tablet and then add a specific image for this, which is even further optimized because remember on the tablet, this is a smaller screen. So ideally you don't want to use the same image on the desktop as on the tablet because uh, this is a bigger size and it's going to take time to load. And the same applies for the phone. So let's say in this example for the phone, we have a highly optimized image, but for the sake of this demo, I'm going to just add another image. So I'm gonna to come to my media library just to prove that uh, this is working okay. So let's assume that this is the optimized image. I'm going to go ahead, and in fact, you can see the size here, 1920 by 978. This is way too big for mobile devices. So anyway, we're just gonna pretend that this is our optimized image. So when visitors go to your site and they're on mobile, this is the image they see, but when they are on the desktop, they are going to see a totally different image, which is this one. So you can see here, as I scroll through, this is changing. And in fact, if I save here, I can go to my desktop and this is the image that we have. Come over here and this image has changed. So if you just replace the bigger image with the smaller image, this will work brilliant for you. Another way to uh, go in and customize different views is to go into our modules and show some on mobiles and also disable them on different devices. Let me show you how you can do that. So let's say I wanna come over here to this image one more time, click advanced, and then I'm going to go to visibility. So let's say on mobile devices, I do not want to show this image. I just want to show the text. What you can do is you can come over here to display on, and then you can say display on desktop. So you can go in and highly customize your content so that it shows on specific devices. So in this case, if I want to disable this on the phone, I can just disable that and that, and now this only shows on the desktop. I'm going to save that and let's see what happens. There we go. So you can see it's grayed out. That means it will not show. So by optimizing your website this way, you're going to improve your critical CSS, therefore making your website even faster. The next optimization tip I want to talk about is presets. So how this works is when you set presets on your website, this loads less CSS on your page. Now imagine this, let's say you're building your sections and uh, also even your rows, but each time you're setting different values for your sections padding. So by doing that, you're just generating more and more CSS for your page. So what makes this page even faster is by using presets. Now let me show you what I mean. So over here, let's say as we're designing our site, we need to have a specific uh, padding on our sections. So let's add a row and we're going to add a call to action in here. So you notice that we have a set padding here, but let's say you want to have a uh, padding, which is even um, slightly more than what we have here. So what you'd normally do when you're designing is you'd come over here to your section settings, go into design, and then over here on uh, spacing, you'd go in and say, okay, here I need 100 pixels. And then you apply it to the top and bottom and then save. Now, notice what happens when I go and build another one. So let's go into regular. And again, I'm going to add a single column. 
Uh, let's add a call to action, just like what we did before. And this time, you can see I have to go in and also add this manually. So all this is just CSS code that I'm just adding each and every time. So sometimes you may say, oh, you know what? I want to add uh, maybe 80%, right? So first of all, by adding 80% or 80 pixels, uh, we are adding more and more CSS code. So for this page, the CSS that has been generated is for the 100 pixels here and also for the what? For the 80 pixels here. So what we need to do is to generate presets in order for us to have consistency throughout our designs. Let me show you how to create your preset. So what you do is you go into any of these sections. So I'm going to use this one here. And then I'm going to uh, come over here, make sure I have uh, my assignments here the way I want it. So 100 pixels should be fine as I'm designing my site. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come all the way to the top here, click on this drop down and create new preset from current styles. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to call this 100 pixels padding. It's always good to name your presets. So what you can do here is you can either set it like this and then apply it every time you're designing. But if this is going to be your main uh, way of uh, having your padding or this is the right setting you need, just save this as a assign this to default and save. OK, so I'm going to say yes, I am sure. And then save this one more time like that. OK, now notice what happens. In fact, let's delete this. Now, notice what happens when I add a new section. So if I click here on this plus button, add my regular section. Now, I know you haven't seen it because I haven't added my call to action yet. And here it is. And I'm just going to save. So what has happened now is you can see, in fact, let's add a background here so you can see this clearly. Okay, there we go. So when I hover over here, you can see our 100 pixels. So every time we're going to create a new section, we're going to see this 100 pixels. Now imagine if you can do this across your, all your modules, all your sections, all your rows. You are going to save a lot of CSS loading up on your pages. So let's say you really, really, really need to use animations. What you need to do here is to choose a specific animation style by doing that, then your page knows that it's going to load that specific style and pretty much that's it. So as you can imagine, if you have different animation styles on the page, this is a lot of code that's being loaded up. So you really want to keep things very clean, very simple. And this should also help your pages load faster. But if you don't really need to use animations, then you can just do without them. Next, let's talk about font pairing. Now, when it comes to font pairing, remember our fonts are being loaded up from uh, Google Fonts. So we need to avoid using many, many fonts on our website. So what I highly recommend you do is to use different font weights or even use at least two font families. Here's what I mean. So if you take a look here, all I have is just different font weights. So I'm using um, pop-ins here and I've just added bold to this one and made the text even bigger because this is heading. But this is one font style. So over here, I've uh, made a change slightly. I'm using a different font here for the heading and for the paragraph. So if you choose this option here, just make sure you stick to two, but not more than two font families. This will make your website load faster, uh, limiting the amount of fonts being loaded up from the Google fonts. Okay, so finally, let's talk about how to optimize our images. I know I touched on this a little bit in the beginning. So the type of images or the image types you need to use on your sites are going to be JPEGs. JPEGs are very easy to optimize. You can make the files smaller without really compromising on the image quality. If you use PNGs, these come with a very, very high file size. Yes, the designs may look all fancy without the backgrounds, but just bear in mind that this is your trade-off. You're going to have, you're going to have have uh, pages that are going to load slower as a result of using JPEGs or even GIFs. And also, as you're designing your site, make sure you go into each and every mobile device uh, size and optimize your websites for those screen sizes. So you need to go into your tablets, optimize your images, optimize your text, go into the um, mobile devices and also do the same. This ensures that your website is going to be fast on all devices. All right, guys, that's all I have for you in today's video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.